Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today I have a most amazing guest. Maria Kellis is here and she is an inspiring leadership coach. Now, before you guys all freak out and say, wait a second, this is an e-commerce business podcast. What are you talking about? I am going to talk to you guys today and interview um, Maria so she can tell you a little bit about why it's really important to have passion and purpose in your business, regardless if you're doing anything in the world, e-commerce, we're not really always personally connected to some of the stuff. If you're building a brand, sure. But if you're just reselling and just kind of putting products together, you know, maybe don't have that super passion and purpose, right? It's just like, oh, I just need to make money. And this is a fun way. Um, But we're going to challenge that today. And Maria is going to kind of walk you through some ideas of really digging into the roots of your passion and why you're doing what you're doing, because there is root, there are roots there. And, um, I just want you to know her. So first of all, um, Maria is, uh, she's a best-selling author. She is an international business consultant and speaker, and she is all about resilience and transformation. I mean, who doesn't want that? I want all of that and then some. So Maria, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And uh, as you said, this is not just about selling this is about becoming extraordinary and i do want to say that success is actually dependent on who you are on your passion on your on your desire because so driven by us um i i was just in china uh, giving a talk and uh the talk um my, my brother is an mit professor uh, and I'm a leadership coach, and uh, we both went to MIT. So it, it was sponsored by the MIT Club of Shanghai and uh, actually the Jia Tong University. And we something, I can't remember how to pronounce it, we some, <laughs> I can't pronounce it, um, hospital. But uh, the, the topic of the talk, which I think is really interesting, it was AI versus yin yang and it has a human potential Mm -hmm. and um my favorite comment from the audience it was oh my god it was like watching tony stark so iron man my brother and dr strange me um give a talk Mm -hmm. and uh, i love this because yes we can increase things yes technology will help us tweaking and changing and and using Every tool in your disposal is necessary for your success. But there's something else that I'm here to talk to you about that not only helps you have passion and purpose, but really gets you better result. Because let's be honest, we all just want more money. That's why we're in business in the first place. <laughs> That's so true. So let's just dive into that. First of all, give us a little bit of your background and um, how you arrived at being a leadership coach to begin with. Absolutely. I know you had mentioned some adversity that you have been through, and I'd love to hear um, the story about that. A collection of adversity. So in 2004 was maybe what I will call the low point in my life. Uh, and uh, at that point, we had the... Um, well, I'm, I'm going to call it like show was over. So mm-hmm. I was in the hospital. I was in a wheelchair. Uh, my fiance left me. All my money went to hospital bills. So I was like so broke. I, I, I obviously was on welfare, but I actually qualified for food stamps. And um, my my body was broken. My memory was gone. Uh, my, my mind was not working. My emotions were depending on the drugs I was in. So happy drugs, happy emotions, otherwise not so happy. I mean, it was like game over. And I mean, I in what can go wrong, I checked all the boxes. Um, I was diagnosed with a very severe form of multiple sclerosis, which is an incurable disease, according to the doctors. And they kind of, after a few months of me not responding to any drugs for uh, recovery, they kind of told me that prognosis was not good. And uh, I made the decision. It all starts with a decision, and that's really important. Um, I made a decision when they brought me the motorized wheelchair that I was not going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Um, and uh, in that moment, I did not know how, <laughs> no idea. I did not know if. I just was like, that's my desire. That's what I want. So when 
I talk to people, I always say it always starts with the decision. And that's the reason I say that. Then over the next few years, I had a series of accidents and diseases. So the step, second step that I always tell people is about clearing because everything, it, it was kind of like a big lens in everything. And it was not fun at the time. Don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. But it taught me that I could just do this over and over and over again. Because the first time it happened, I was like, that's a medical miracle. When I got out of the wheelchair, when I didn't have a mess. Well, I mean, technically, I will never not have a mess. But I stopped having a mess symptoms. Um, so then the next few years is can I do it for myself over and over again? And I did. And in 2008, I... Um, my, my cousin in Grace, I, I was mostly in the United States at the time, but my cousin in Grace, I, I'm from Grace originally. I went back and for 17 years, she had been trying to get pregnant. And then she touched me. She started crying. And then next month she was pregnant. And she's like, Maria, what did you do? It was amazing. I'm like, I did this? <laughs> <laughs> so the next few years is like, okay, I can do it. Can I do it for others? Can I do it in a repeatable way? And... Uh, and then once um, that got me to about 2012, where it was like a huge other experience. Remember, I had a very, very intense life. Well, you don't remember, you don't know me, but I had a very intense life. And uh, I had an accident, the last big accident. And in that accident, I had what they call a near-death experience. So I literally died and came back. And I had what they call in the East a Bodhisattva experience. I went through hundreds of lives, going back thousands of years. I saw myself shifting and understood karma. And as a Christian, I, you know, in Greece we're Christian, I was very confused. And I was like, this is really weird. And um, and so, but I couldn't go back after an experience like that. I couldn't go back to what I was doing. I, I At the time I used to work for the government of Greece and I, I kind of left. And uh, first I lived in Bali, and uh, and then I started living in Thailand. I travel the world. I I have designed a lifestyle where I like literally travel all the time because I love it. And sometimes I don't. Like right now, I'm in a year where I don't feel like traveling, so I don't travel that much. And uh, what I have designed is a life by choice, a life by design, extraordinary life by design. And the internet gives us the ability to do that. There was a time where I would go from country to country and have to build a new a new company pretty much, a new following every time. Until I finally discovered the internet around 2014, 15, maybe 16 is when I started teaching on the internet. And suddenly everything changed because I could be <laughs> in that little island next to the beach watching the dolphins and the sea turtles and do my work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gave me the possibility to have an international team. So I realized that I'm not good at everything. So I hired people around the world and I love having a team around the world because I don't know what they are. I don't know what they do. I don't care about how they run their lives. A lot of them actually are busy moms mm -hmm. and uh, they want to make an income on the side from um, having a family. And sometimes they work in the middle of the night and I'm like, great, <laughs> it's quiet then, <laughs> why not? But um, the message that I want to say is that if you look at my life, I had all the excuses in the world to feel like a victim. Why did this happen to me? Why is my life so hard? And I chose to change. I chose to step up. And I always just go that. ahead. So you've been, yeah. you, you said many things about decisions and choices. And that's what I absolutely love. Because when thing when it comes down to it, no matter no matter what you go through, and I know some people go through many more hardships and tragedies and illnesses and things like that than others. But we could all probably agree that life is hard for us at, at many moments throughout life. The older you get, the more you realize that life is short and full of trouble, right? There's always, you know, whether every COVID happened to everyone, they, you know, globally, uh, it wasn't just, you know, little places here and there or business or things, you know, come up now or your accident or an illness. 
Um, but what I really want to focus on is that choice. What, you know, you had every excuse in the world. That's what you said. That was such a beautiful statement. You had every excuse in the world to be a victim, to make excuses, to sit down and give up and be defeated and expect the world to um, come after you and, and, and help you. But instead, you said, I made a decision. I made a choice. What do you feel like factored into that, um, those choices that you've decided? Okay, I don't want to be in a wheelchair the rest of my life. And even if I have some, some um, disabilities or some illnesses or anything, I can still move forward. What do you feel like really empowered you to make a different choice? Okay, I can answer from two perspectives. One is the philosophy perspective. And the second one is my own personal choice. And I'm going to start with a philosophy perspective just because I want people to understand this in a very deep level. And this comes from ancient Greek philosophy. There is, and, and that's my take on it, but there's four levels of responsibility. Things happen to me. That's when things happen. Life happens. Events happen and I react. And I like reacting because uh, react is acting the same way. It's like turning in circles, right? Um, then the next stage, and in that stage, the world sucks. Things happen, COVID happens, the economy crashes, there's a war, there's an accident, there's a, there's a storm, there is the climate change, everything is happening. And it's happening to me. And I have no control over anything and I feel completely lost and misguided. And the next step is things happen for me. And that step is through gratitude. So. Things happen for me. Well, you know what? The way I got out of the wheelchair is to realize that, yeah, it sucks. And I started looking at the things I was grateful for. In the beginning, it was hard. It was hard because it's like, oh, my God. But I gained some things. I gained some things from that experience, right? I, I lost some things and I gained some things. And I started feeling grateful for the things I gained. And like magic. The moment I really started feeling grateful, disease started not being so affecting me. And uh, in the beginning, as I said, it felt like a medical miracle. So I didn't quite place it in the, I did it. And uh, as I said, it took me eight years of accidents and diseases and things like that for me to, my life to be destroyed over and over and over and over again, to fall on the flat on my face, to to lose everything over and over again until until I realized that every time I was rebuilding and every time it was, was faster, better, easier. And I was like, huh, oh, there's this method to this madness. And I realized this is not so random. So step one is um, make the choice. So like go from things happen to me. So to step two, things happen for me. Mm -hmm. And then after my near-death experience, I started observing. Remember, that's when I started seeing the awareness. And uh, that's when I started seeing as things happen. Because I'm like, well, let's see what happens. I wonder. And this is crucial as a step because that's what we call mindfulness. That's what we call being in the moment, in the now. And uh, this step is, for, for those of you who already feel happy, the next step is to just stop judging stop saying this is good or bad be very zen about it oh this happened okay oh this happened okay until i got to that stage where i am today where i literally live by life by choice by design by what i call being the creator life happens through me so remember those four stages things happen to me things happen for me things happen and things happen through me and through me is really the level of the creator like that, that that's me playing and saying I wonder what country is going to be fun to live in and I wonder where it's going to be who it's going to be fun to and I keep manifesting this and some of you may not be there yet now now so I'm telling you if you live in the victim the first thing to do is introduce gratitude in your life so you can go to the things happen for you make it up play the Pollyanna game this happened great why is it good for me? And play the game. It, can, it It's up to you. Henry Ford famously said, if you think you can, you're right. And if you think you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. So we make the choice. This is your choice. I always tell people, you have four things here you can control. What you think, what you say, what you do, and I also believe what you feel. Mm -hmm. And 
Those four things are the only things. Everything else is really outside our control, but our life is in our control. And this is the shift in awareness is realizing that, yeah, things happen. But you make choices and things happen for you, through you. No, no, I do have a question. One of the things that I feel like I hear a lot from people as an entrepreneur and a coach is this constant wave of fear. So when I hear you talking about the mindfulness and gratefulness and, and these different things, I'm all about all of those things. I'm a silver lining person. I always look at like, oh, okay. When you say things like happen to me or through me, um, I love those um, phrases because you can really own that. The things that happen to you, you have no control over. But I think there's a major wave of fear that cripples so many people so how do you how do you deal with that when you're facing an unknown you're facing things that you cannot control you're aware of that and you acknowledge it but you still have this fear that present prevents you from Absolutely. kind of taking the next step so how do you conquer that in your life that is a really good question and i want to say that uh, we don't always call fear as fear very often as entrepreneurs as business people we call fear stress and uh I, I always say that the polite way for overachievers and business people to talk about fear is that they're stress and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, but really, that comes from fear. And that comes from, if you look around it, what is the difference between fear and trust? Those are on the opposite end. Trust and faith are absolutely necessary and absolutely not easy, especially for us smart people, right? Because mm -hmm. I, I always said, I have no faith whatsoever. I, I I am based on facts. I, If you look at the progress in my career, in my, in my business, I used to do miracle sessions from people because I needed to convince myself that I could keep doing it over and over and over again. And when I could, I was sure I could do it, I started saying, well, can I do it faster? But really, because I still was not, I didn't have faith that I could do it. And faith is a really interesting concept because it comes before the results, mm -hmm. right? So you're, having an intention you're expecting the outcome you're trusting the universe of course you don't and then you know you have to have faith to keep going through the motions and and then you don't get results and you're like well nothing's happening it's not working for me and and faith is truly that idea of letting go remember the four things i said are in our control what we say what we do, what we think, and what we feel. That's it. Really. That means that everything else is not in your control. So if you're sitting there being nice to a person and saying nice things, that's in your control. How they react, it's up to them. If you're putting a product out, that's within your control. How people perceive what you write in your little description, that's outside your control. But you do control what you do. And the more you let go of this idea, this illusion of control for the world, the less fear you have. Because truly, you can be guaranteed that you can control what you do mm -hmm. until you get mad and you lose it. And then you're <laughs> like, okay, that was definitely not inside my control. But then touch yourself, touch yourself in that moment, say, great, I just lost it. You know, and, and by the way, family, number one, uh, a way of like getting us to remember how we're human and lose our control <laughs> talk to our family right children <laughs> it's like, spouses <laughs> yeah I know you're like huh so what made you decide to paint the wall black with your little crayons hmm thank you that's a really nice color but why it's like oh but it looks cool I'm like really <laughs> but you know it, it's kind of like especially children, they love to play and you can't even really be mad at them because they're exploring the world mm -hmm. and in the process create some major disasters, <laughs> right? <laughs> How many times though, you know, that's actually just such a beautiful statement because if we relate that to our own lives as, as we get older, um, we 
we get a little bit more uptight and we need to think a little bit more like children. I mean, think about it. Like in the process of them growing and becoming people, they are creating these beautiful disasters all over the place and, and messes as they're figuring out the world. Is that not what we do in business too? We, we, yeah. we, we get creative and we get messy and they're getting our hands dirty and some things fail, but then you realize that's how we learn. That's how we realize, oh, this is kind of a mess, Absolutely. but I can create in this way. So I, that is such a, it's a beautiful transition um, to talk about the passion. So um, I know that you're always talking about, um, you know, having passion and purpose and how that's really important um, and segueing that into what we can control because there is a beautiful breakthrough and a release when you realize and own there's so many things that you can't control. Um, I think it's just a, it's one of those things like, honestly, if we just sit and think about the weather for one second and we could get, we could get upset about it, we could get mad, we could love the sunshine and hate the rain, but there's nothing we can do about it except our own emotions and our own attitude. And so I love, even just when I always relate it to the weather, because that's something universally we can all agree that none of us can do anything about. <laughs> I'll let her know, you know, I'm in the spiritual <laughs> circle. So, you know, well, I'm you not know, going to say, well, if I needed easily, to. <laughs> let, let's say we cannot control the weather easily okay. and definitely not, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah let, let's leave it up. Because yeah, putting that into perspective of I, I, I do want to say in my journey, um, I have seen everything that I thought was not possible become possible. So we can create extraordinary things as humans. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I can say is that our intention, our desire, as it becomes focus. And the stronger we are and the more intense we are, the more desire becomes true. And so even the weather, <laughs> but but this is at the level where I was saying things happen to me, things happen for me, things happen, things happen through me. So that's at the level four. So you cannot jump from things happen to me to level four. You have to go through the steps. And I've been doing this with clients for a while as I'm teaching them how to be extraordinary leaders. And I know that if I take somebody who's at level one, things happen to me and feeling like a victim, the first thing I need to do is exactly what you're saying, Kristen, which is giving them the opportunity to find their passion, their purpose, their goal. And uh, I'm going to give an answer. I always like to give a little bit of the theory before I give just the answer. Um, there is a author that I really respect and admire, uh, but Mr. Fuller, he lived in the last century and was one of those pioneers in philosophy. And um, he talked about the law of procession in a very different way. So if you think of procession, procession is like a spinning top. So you're spinning a top and there's an axis of rotation and there's one axis of rotation that is perpendicular always to the motion of spinning. The procession is that force that rotation force and if you think about it in the earth it's like the north pole the north pole and south pole well there there is an axis of rotation of the earth and right now guess what our axis is pointing to the north star called polaris and yeah we all look at the sky think of the northern star but that's the axis of rotation that's where the earth is pointing to and three thousand years ago the earth was pointing to Cuba, and 14,000 years from now, it's going to uh, point to Vega. And in that transition, I, I don't know if you've heard all the hippie weird people talk about the age of Aquarius and entering the age of Aquarius. That's what they're talking about. The earth is spinning and everything spins with it. So we, in a very mini scale, we also have an axis of rotation, but we don't know it. We don't have to know our purpose in order to fulfill our purpose. So I like to talk about the analogy of the bee. The little bees, if you think about the bees, super important in the earth, right? What do they do to cross-pollinate this planet? If you think about the species bee, what does it do for the planet? It's cross-pollination. But does the bee know that it's supposed to cross-pollinate? No, the bee's sitting there and like, I wonder where my next flower is going to be. And this is a little cute flower. It goes, lands, and then as it moves around, like it collects pollen and then as it goes to the next flower, you know, goes and then some it collects pollen again and leaves some of the pollen and now cross pollinates, right? So what I say to people is don't worry so much about the theory. 
of what your purpose is. Worry about your next flower. Whatever you're after is your next flower. It's your purpose for now. Mm -hmm. And once you achieve that, worry about your next flower because it's going to be your purpose for later. And without knowing it, you're achieving your greater purpose. So for example, you're um, in e-commerce, you're promoting one product and you find another product that you're excited about and you want to do. Well, go there and find out why. Yes. And I love what you said, Kristen, about making mistakes. I, I always talk about imperfect action. Be in action, be in motion, be in motion, right? But be in motion, that is what creates energy in your business, that's what keeps you going forward. And by being in motion, it doesn't matter what you do. We have to make decisions really smart. As, as, as business people, we have to make decisions in the fly, and we don't always have all the answers when we make the decision. Hindsight is twenty twenty, mm -hmm. But in the moment, we make decisions. I was like, yeah, that was not the best idea. <laughs> and that's okay. You know what? The fact that you're in motion is more important than having to sit there paralyzed and trying to decide left or right. It doesn't matter. Make the decision given what you have, given the abilities you have, given the decisions you can make right now and trust that it's the best decision you could have made in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow you'll make another decision and, and trust yourself enough to know that you can fix whatever mistake you made because you're creating your life. So you created it yesterday, you're going to create it tomorrow too. So don't worry about it. Okay, this is this may or may not be off topic, but it just came into my head. And I just feel like it's a great and valid question for that. You know, earlier on, you had mentioned releasing judgment about things, whether they're good or bad. And it's been my experience working with clients from all over the world and different walks of life and different things that what other people are going to think of their decisions plays into that fear or lack of decisions. And I just wonder if you can elaborate a little bit on that judgment, not only judgment from others, but self judgment and judgment of this is good or bad or otherwise, rather than just saying, this is what I'd like to do. This is what I'm going to do. And it matters not what Jim or Joe or this person or that person actually thinks or cares about it because this is my decision. So can you fill in the gaps a little bit for us there? Because I think that also leads into that gratitude. If we're not placing so much judgment on everything we do, but measuring mm -hmm. it, whether it's good or bad or helpful or should, I hate the word should, because um, uh -huh. other people want to tell us what we should do all the time. Uh -huh. um, so how does I know, play Tony in? Robbins it yeah, always says, stop shooting all yeah. over yourself. <laughs> right. Um, I love that question, and it's a question that's very relevant to the next step. Remember, things happen to me, things happen for me, things happen, things happen through me. So while you're in the state where you feel happy, you feel grateful, you, you easily find positive things to look at, it's, it's a little bit hard to step into this, these things happen. Um, when I talk about this, I always say, well, think of the eye of the hurricane. Right. Life is very busy, rotating, circling, blah, 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 big noise. But if you're in your center, in your power, you're at peace. Nothing happens here. And yeah, you can see the, the world spinning, but you're at peace. So when we were talking about fear, fear is not knowing what's happening, not knowing what's going to come. But you know what? You don't know. Of course you don't know. Have you seen children like, and I do want to use this, uh, uh, the example of a child because when I started learning how to walk, I it was difficult. It was really difficult. I I had what um so the what they call demyelination, so that means that my nerves were damaged, mm -hmm. and I was getting huge neuropathic pain. So that means everything hurt. I didn't feel cold or hot or movement but I felt pain for everything. And one of the ways I I went back to being functional walking is I literally remapped pain. So I looked at pain saying, not good, not bad, it is. And I said, well, pain is information. So remember gratitude, I started feeling grateful for having pain because I'm like, well, I could have nothing. At least I have pain. So that gives me some signal. And so I start saying, well, some of that pain is hot or cold. Some of that pain is movement. Some of that pain is, well, me hitting something. 
Um, and I started comparing myself not to adults walking around because I couldn't. One of my friends, and I will always be grateful to her, she came when I was in the hospital, I was in long-term hospital for many months, right? And she came with her baby. Um, baby Zoe at the time was maybe, oh, around one years old. So she was just learning how to walk. I started comparing how many times did Zoe fall today and how many times did Maria fall today? And you know what? It was the best comparison because Zoe, you know, will fall down, maybe cry for a second and then be up and walking again, happy. And she never gave up. She never, and we didn't expect her to give up. We didn't say, well, it's not going to happen. Okay, well, you fell, like now that's it. It's over. We're like, great, try again, right? It was so much easier to say this to baby Zoe than to me because, well, we didn't know, right? But I just kept saying, well, no, I'm like baby Zoe. I'll just fall, but I'll get up and then tomorrow I'll do better. And, you know, yeah, sometimes, you know, over over the weeks and months, like Zoe was falling much less than me. But, you know, it took us an equivalent amount of time to learn how to walk. Okay, it took me longer, but mm -hmm. you know what? It's okay. It was okay. Like, I stopped listening to things like oh my god i fell like i i just started to learn that i'm gonna fall and i'm gonna get up again every time mm -hmm. and it's not how many times you fall it's how many times do you stand up afterwards yeah as long as plus one you're okay just stand up after you fall that's it and sometimes i was tired i'm like okay today i'm gonna cry for the rest of the day and then tomorrow i'll try again and that's okay there's no hurry so we will stumble, we will fall, we will make mistakes. And um, Colin Powell, like, remember, I'm a leadership coach. I like to talk about leadership. But Colin Powell famously said that if you take risks between 40 and 70%, that's how you should be. If you're under 40, you're being reckless. So if it's less than 40% success rate, you're taking a big risk. That's reckless. If it's more than 70 you've lost the opportunity that was in front of you mm. so we make choices that we don't know and there's no way to know and most of us wait till it's 90 or 95 percent correct and i'm like go at 70 mm. yeah it looks like it's gonna go and then just jump and figure it out on the way sometimes i, I use the expression build the airplane as you're flying for well, mm. you know and and yeah okay that, that's a big leap but literally trust that you're going to be good enough that you're going to be able to move fast enough no matter what happens to react in the moment as things are happening i think that comes too with the just trying things like you said building the, air, the airplane in the air that is i don't know that i've ever actually heard that but i love it because it literally describes me <laughs> i'm always <I> see an <laughs> opportunity i see something good i'm like okay well, let's try it i i'm definitely a glass half full kind of a person i don't have expectations i'm just will i have a, a strong um risk tolerance <laughs> so i'm willing to take and, risks and, and most learn of from us were entrepreneurs do have that profile entrepreneurs by definition are entrepreneurs because they have a high tolerance to risk and and guess what that is something we should use to our advantage mm. i love what you're saying you're like christian you're like the perfect entrepreneur you're like i don't know but i'll figure it out and you have like this funny attitude and let's play and figure it out on the way there it's and actually so and that's true. exactly what it takes that, you know, and that, part of that comes from, like you were saying too earlier, and we all, I mean, I can't, I guess we can't say we all, I speak for myself and most people I've met um, do struggle with um, what, whether, what people are going to think of them, what, what are my in-laws going to think, what are, what's my boss going to think, what is my sister going to think, what is someone going to think about what I choose to pursue, and are they going to judge me for that, and a lot of people make so many decisions based on fear or based on judgment of, from other people, when if they just looked inside to figure out what what do you want and why do you want it what does it matter if your neighbor or your cousin or your spouse even or your pastor or someone just doesn't agree with you or doesn't like it why does that have to affect you <laughs> now being realistic we know that i mean a lot of people are people pleasers i tend to be one of those um, but as i get older i'm learning i'm the one that i have to please the most because when i'm happy 
honestly, I don't care if everyone else is, likes my choices or not. <laughs> I think it's That's a freedom it. and, a, and a breakthrough. I'm, I'm a people person. I'm always, I love to serve and I, I love when everyone is happy. I, I in just that way. But recently I realized that, that just, it's always an impossibility. Someone's always going to have judgment. Someone's always going to have feedback, whether it's critical, positive, whatever else. And the more that you um, stay true to your own decisions and own them and take the risk and the responsibility, because there's both, um, that you can just be an overall more peaceful person. And so that's what I've been embracing lately. So I love that you've touched on so many of those things. And I'm um, just kind of wrapping up here with that passion side. If someone is finding themselves like, I don't know that I'm passionate. I'm just going through the motions. And yes, I'm making money in my business, but I'm just, like you said, you said burnout and stress is also comes back to fear. So in wrapping it up, where, where's a step somebody can take to move from, okay, I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed, I'm not sure what my passion is, I'm kind of floundering in the water, to, to move closer to that passion. Remember what I was talking about, the little bee? Mm -hmm. You don't have to figure out everything. So when you find yourself stressed and overwhelmed, the first thing to do is stop. Just stop. Really, stop it. Stop being there, stop and take a moment, breathe. Seriously, it sounds silly, but stop and breathe. And if you need if you need to breathe a few times, that's great. Breathe until you can breathe and you can feel your breath. You can feel your breath. Your, you can feel yourself breathing. And then pick one flower. Be like the bee. Go for one flower. What is the thing that you can do right now in this moment and achieve it and finish it? So go all the way to the flower. Pick up the pollen, do a little motion, finish that completely, absolutely. Hmm. You can create, I, I love to-do list, so I, I say put everything that's in your mind that needs to be done in a to-do list and pick one thing. And one thing that I've seen people do and fail at, of course, is that they want to do 10 things at a time. It doesn't work. You do one thing and you finish it. And then you check it off your list and then you go to the next thing. First, it's going to help you not be stressed because you've done one thing. Second, if you do three to five things in a day through your list, guess what? It's a really good day. Mm -hmm. And that's enough. You may think that your list is endless. It is really not. The only reason it's endless is because you do five minutes of one thing, five minutes of another, five minutes of another, five minutes of this, and then back to the first one and then back to that. Mm -hmm. And Take it as far as you go. So let's say I usually deal with like 10 to 15 things at the same time because um, I'm, I'm an overachiever. <laughs> but I usually take them to the point where I can. Like let's say it's an email, it's a presentation, I'm sending it out. I'm waiting for their reply. Well, guess what? I'm not going to sit around waiting for their reply. I'm going to do my next. So I'm busy doing something else. And they reply in their own time. And when they reply, I can decide to put it back in my priority list and deal with that. So by having multiple things, it actually helps us to not be idle and not stay there and like wait. Mm -hmm. But it cannot be too many things. Yeah. I, I recommend people to start with three to five things maximum. I'm at 15 because I've been practicing this for a while. <laughs> but three to five is a really good number. Three to five is the maximum a human can do without quitting falling apart unless they have systems and process in place and i love systems and process because it allows me for example to do 10 to 15 things at the same time and not fall apart and guess what i have a team behind me that's why i can do so many things because i don't have to do everything i delegate yeah and that's very very important for anyone at any stage of business i hear so often people talk about how they can't afford to hire help or they can't afford to do this or I have to do everything myself because I don't trust anyone. And that is the biggest mistake anyone makes in any business because like you said, I am not I am not good at everything. I don't want to do everything. I cannot do everything. Yeah. So what are the things the most I'm always talking about outsourcing? Because, you know, there's always someone who actually likes doing the things that you don't. <laughs> so find that 
that person and they'll be happy and you'll be happy and things will get done um, very efficiently when everyone's working in their own zone of genius and can say, okay, this is this person's goal. You know, my sister is very opposite of me. She's a very numbers based, very uh, left brained, logical, likes to work with tons of numbers and logic and all that stuff. And I'm very much a creative and over on this side. And so there's always the, the balance to uh, someone different than you that actually really enjoys the tasks that you don't. So that can also free up that space and get you more things done when um, people are Absolutely. doing things that are and, and I love how you mentioned your sister like because your sister is there like look around you for resources before you have money to hire people you have resources that you're not even realizing you have so delegate means let go of control not everything has to be perfect mm. and as a recovering perfectionist I can tell you that the less I care about perfection, the better things are. Mm. Because perfect is an illusion. It never gets there, ever. That's very true. It, it, it's impossible and useless to waste your time trying to make things perfect. Make mm. them good enough and trust that it's okay. It's okay. It's good enough for now, for today, and tomorrow you're going to make it better. Because some things, you can only see the path once you've traveled a little bit. So maybe if you're here, you, you can't see what's behind the mountain. So first you go up the mountain and then you're like, oh, that's the valley that I'm going to. So then you can choose. But first, get there. So don't, don't, don't try to say, well, I'm not sure what my full decision is and where I'm going to go in the future until you've crossed the mountain. First say, okay, I'm going to first climb that mountain. All right, now I'm at the top. Let me decide what to do next. Mm. Because it's always a consequential. If you try to do everything at the same time, it's impossible. And also you're going to fail. And mm -hmm. I love what you said about hiring people. I hire people. I used to hire people who are just like me, which is a really big mistake. <laughs> because, you know, I like them better. And now I hire people who are just not like me. And that's, you know, I mean, they have some characteristics like me. Like, for example, my team manager is very, I am a supporter. So she's very supportive. And I love that about her because she gets me in that way. Right. And I have two team managers, actually. The other one is very analytical and organized because guess what? We need to go through Trello and organize the activities. And I have a person in my team. She loves repetitive tasks. As I am also a creative. So oh my God, if you tell me to do a thousand things, this, 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 this thing a thousand times, I'm like, please kill me first. Yeah. That, that would be kinder, right? <laughs> Same. So yeah. whenever it's a repetitive task, she's in her happy element. Oh my God, she loves it. She's like, she's patient. She's like, doo, 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 doo. right? Perfect. Mm. Let her do it, right? So find the things that you'd like to do and keep them for yourself because that's your zone of genius and find the things you really don't like to do and then delegate. Mm -hmm. One thing that us entrepreneurs were famous for is like we're bad at accounting and we're bad at marketing. <laughs> so delegate those first things we should delegate. Yeah, don't do your own bookkeeping and your taxes and things that you just despise because you'll put them off anyway. You're procrastinating. You won't do your best and then you'll overthink and it won't be. It's just easier to say, you love this stuff? Great. Here it is. I'm happy to take it off my plate and put it on yours. So Maria, thank you so much for coming here and sharing all of this wisdom and all of these different things. There's so many golden nuggets here that people can walk away and just contemplate. So thank you for your time and your energy. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and I don't take that for granted. So thank you so much for sharing uh, all these just pieces of wisdom with us here. And can you let everyone know where else they can come and get connected with you? Absolutely. Well, first, thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. I am, I am passionate about helping the world. And to me, this is the biggest thing I can do. So thank you for helping me with my purpose, which is to make the world a better place. That's what I'm after. So, and thank you for the work you do. Each and every one of you are special and extraordinary. And that's the message I always want to leave people with. Uh, in order to contact me, you can find me on my website, mariakellis.com so that's maria kellis k-e-l-l-i-s.com and uh, at mariakellis.com we have free gifts and we have quizzes to help you discover what stage you're in um, and uh, 
free meditations that you can do. I I have a package that I call it productivity package, which is if you have, I, I first started with a seven minute meditation, then it was too long. So then we went to two minutes. And then finally somebody said, you know what? I only have 30 seconds. And I said, great, let me create a 30 minute, a 30 second meditation. And sometimes it's like preparing for a meeting. Like I have like a meditation there that's preparing for a meeting. And those are all free gifts that you can get there. And if you want to talk more to me, you can also book a 20 minute complimentary call where I will help you find maybe your biggest blockage or you think that you're here to do. So either one for, for me, this is easy because I read energy. So I can definitely tell people. And uh, I believe that by being the most extraordinary version of you, you're actually doing a favor to the world mm. because by being authentically yourself, you're really doing what you were born to do. And mm. if I, I always say whatever we are seeking is causing us to seek. So your purpose is looking for you the same way you're looking for your purpose. So trust that when you feel happy, you're you're there. That's your signal. Oh, that's such a beautiful way to end the show. Thank you so much for that. And that just literally just gave me goosebumps to think about that. Just feel like your passion is always looking, is also looking for you. Oh, I just love that piece of truth there. So thank you so much again, you guys. All the show notes will be below this and in the blog and on the website. So everything you need to do to get connected with Maria is there for you. Again, well, guys, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Thanks for joining us.